you ever seen anything you couldn't explain? Something you perhaps weren't supposed to see? Well, you wouldn't be the only one. In fact, many people have had encounters with extraterrestrial beings and creatures they assumed were just legends or scary stories. Thus, groups were formed to research and investigate these mysterious creatures. Naturally, a top-secret government group in the United States was formed called Project Blue Book, which investigated unexplained flying objects. Following several other projects like Project Signs and Project Grudge, Project Blue Book's goals were similar. Researching extraterrestrial sightings and finding a logical explanation. Although rumors spread that Project Blue Book's ultimate purpose was to cover up the truth of these cases, even if that meant ignoring key details that would signal to something unnatural and unordinary. It began in the late 1940s when public hysteria was at an all-time high. Notably, citizens at the time had suffered through both the Great Depression and World War II shortly after. President Franklin D. Roosevelt, who led the country through the Great Depression and World War II, even stated that, quote, The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Nameless, unreasoning, unjustified terror which paralyzes. The statement explained that the public were mentally exhausted and stressed, which meant it didn't take much for a massive panic to arise among the public. The paranoia caused massive concern regarding the nation's stability, showing that people were truly overwhelmed during this time. Unfortunately for them, though, this is when UFOs and alien sightings began to make an appearance, drawing attention and frightening the already strained and panicked society. These circumstances caused the government and military to intervene, pushing Project Blue Book to calm the emerging alarm amongst the general public. It started with Project Sign, who investigated unexplained flying objects in the late 1940s. Although the majority of the group suspected these aircrafts were unidentified Soviet aircrafts, some also thought aircrafts from other worlds might be the cause. Not having much luck in their findings, the project eventually started to diminish when UFO activity started to decrease. Eventually, after the name of the project was supposedly compromised, Project Grudge became its successor. However, it was clear if they changed the name of the project truly because of that reason, or if it was to try and hide their trails, which raised some onlookers' suspicions. The successor, Project Grudge, didn't have much success either, and was slowly sinking as well. Following the same concept as Project Sign, this project really only raised suspicions and left us with more questions than answers. In fact, why was it truly necessary to change the name anyways? Why start a new project? What files were they potentially trying to keep away from the public's eye? None of these questions were ever logically answered with solid explanations, and the project was short-lived. Following that, the project actually died off fairly quickly and was replaced with Project Blue Book. Having a bit more success than the other predecessors, Project Blue Book had a hand in researching a lot of popular cases, soaring roughly around the 1960s. Led by Captain Edward Ruppelt, who was dedicating to making the project legitimate and solidified in investigations, they extensively looked through many cases. Though believers didn't get the answer they wanted typically. As a matter of fact, most UFO sightings were discounted shortly after being investigated. Common explanations Project Blue Book created regarding the culprits of these incidents were weather balloons, paranoia, aircrafts in the area, and weather phenomenon. Though it was clear that key details of individual cases such as Roswell were ignored or silenced. For example, not all officers were convinced that the Roswell case in 1947 was caused by a weather balloon, 
such as Jesse Marcel, who searched the site where the occurrence happened. Nevertheless, it was obvious that there was a preference on what explanations the majority wanted the public to hear. With explanations needed, even if the facts didn't match up, Project Blue Book was successful in calming the public for the most part. Besides the civilians dedicated to these cases, to those that analyzed the project, many thought they lacked coordination and willingly turned a blind eye to anything that lacked explanation. One example that shows negligence is the investigation of the Ken Ross disappearance. Having only two papers written on the case, they believed it was an accidental crash and no UFOs were ever encountered, which was quite a stretch. In reality, the radar blip had caught an unknown aircraft that the pilots had pursued, but neither of these planes were ever seen again after they merged on radar. Opposing the explanation even more, the pilot was very experienced decreasing the probability there was an accidental crash. Inevitably, the reputation of Project Blue Book started to take a hit due to these speedy and uncritical explanations. Eventually having the same fate as its predecessors, Project Blue Book started to lose popularity among the public. Though there were attempts to transfer the project, these attempts failed because no one wanted to take on the burden of the project. Following these struggles, it eventually shut down in December 1969, but it didn't stop them from covering their bases. Actually, according to Kevin Randall, all unidentified cases were to be, quote, classified immediately and releasing any such information carried a 10-year prison sentence and a $10,000 fine, end quote. In addition, after 1976, when the files were released into the National Archives, it was noticed that cases were missing, altered, or edited. For instance, names were changed and locations were removed. Overall, a loss in research regarding these widespread cases. In conclusion, Project Blue Book was created to research unexplained extraterrestrial phenomenon and find logical explanations to clarify these events. They were meant to calm the already overwhelmed society and keep them informed. Unfortunately, their reputation took a downfall when cases weren't given solid explanations and important details were overlooked. What do you think? Do you think they were legitimate and just lack coordination? Or do you think they were trying to cover up the existence of alien life forms? Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Also, if you would like to see more uploads from me, please hit the subscribe button and turn post notifications on so you won't miss my next upload. Thanks again, and don't answer the door if the men in black pay you a visit. <laughs>